Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. This is God's word for our lives. Well, it's been a long and arduous journey over the last 18 months, but you know this whole coronavirus thing is kind of coming to a close. And the reason that I say that is not just because I'm optimistic, but statistically speaking, I read this online, everyone is kind of coming out of their, their nervousness perhaps, and they're traveling. Uh, you can tell perhaps maybe uh, that there's a number of people who aren't here today because, well, they're on vacation and they're, they're driving. Uh, I read this, this last week that 81% of Americans intend over the next three months to travel a considerable distance away from their home for the purpose of vacation. Now, that differs greatly from the last couple of years because, uh, like last year, it was less than half of the people uh, in America, we're thinking and considering leaving. Why? Well, because of obviously the, the coronavirus. But now 81% of all Americans are going to be leaving, heading out, even in spite of horrible high gas prices. People are going to be traveling by planes, trains, and automobiles. Uh, that amount, 80, 81%, is about 208 million people uh, in America will be traveling. Uh, for those of you uh, who, who maybe are driving, I, I always wonder, you know, what it would be like to, to be a fly in the wall inside of a vehicle of a young family uh, that, that's traveling across country. If you think about it, uh, if you did this when you were younger, your kids were younger, right? You have the dad, uh, much like myself, who is always going to make sure that every leg of the journey is detailed and we know exactly what time frame we're supposed to be there. Uh, the dad always is the one that, that has all of the, the arrangements for, uh, for hotels or camping all situated. And every dad, if they're like me, this is the one thing they're doing. They're always making sure to make good time, Right? I, I, I got this from my father. I remember w- when I was a kid, we were driving uh, cross country to visit uh, family in the Midwest. And I distinctly remember on more than one occasion when we would stop to get gas, my, my, my dad just wanted to travel straight through. We, we didn't stop at hotels. He would say this If you're not done going by the bathroom or going to the bathroom by the time the, the tank is full, we'll pick you up on the way home. And you know what? One time he almost did it. It wasn't me, it was my sister. We, we kind of forgot that she wasn't in the back of the station wagon. But that's what the dad does, right? And then you have the mom. Uh, the mom in those situations on, on, on car travel or traveling by car is, is if they have younger kids, she's got about a million and one activities all planned out to keep those kids satisfied, whether it's screens or, or maybe some uh, hybrid looking Lego box that they can put, just put right on their lap. Or, or, or the other thing, too, is that you have infinite amount of snacks, right, to keep the kids comfortable. And, and in my family, one thing that we always have to bring for the kids is extra Dramamine uh, because we don't want any one of those kids to get sick. And then, of course, the kids, right, on the trip, that's, that's the craziness uh, of everything is because kids are so curious. They want to know, you know, what, what this is out there and why that looks this way. And, and mom and dad, are, are there any trains out there? I'd like to see a train. That'd be great. And of course, the, the big curious question that kids always ask, are we there yet? Yeah. It's daunting to travel. Uh, and, and any person, no matter how much you may plan, there's always things that just kind of pop up, right? Right? Whether it's an emergency vehicle situation, something doesn't work, a flat tire, or, or, or the hotel didn't have your reservations, or, or God forbid, one of the kids gets sick in the car. Oh, man. Well, what do I talk about this? Because here's the thing. If there's one thing that all of us could have and that we would take automatically is if someone could tell us before we went on our trip, whether it's through the, 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 the plane or it's in the car or train, whatever, it would be wonderful if someone could say, guess what? No matter what happens, it's all good. Everything's going to be fine. But that's not a reality, is it? Or, or is it? Because here's the thing. Today we're going to look at a section of Scripture that I think everyone pretty much knows by heart. 
It's what we call the Aaronic blessing. You see, back in uh, the Old Testament, God established uh, the priesthood, these uh, men who were there to lead the people of Israel in the way that they would worship and approach God. And, and the first of those people was a man by the name of Aaron who happened to be Moses' brother. And at a certain point, as they had left Egypt, the land of slavery, the, the, the nation of Israel is out in the wilderness, and, and God established the priesthood, and he established how the people were to worship him. And one of the things he made sure is to give to Aaron and all of those other priests a way for them to bless the people. Well, what does that mean, to bless them? Well, really what God is wanting to do is he wants to remind them in a very personal way that as they make their journey throughout this wilderness, as they live their lives, as they uh, continue to exist as God's chosen people, he wants them to know that everything's going to be all right. And the way that he does that is by telling Aaron, this is how you are to bless the people, right? The, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Every time that the Old Testament believers would gather together to worship their God before they left, this is what Aaron and all the other priests would say. Now, here's the amazing thing that I, I really hope can be stressed today is because you will often hear these words, but I wonder if you hear them so often that they begin to lose their meaning and impact in your everyday life. You know, uh, uh, truth be told, when I was a kid, I, I'd go to church every single Sunday, right, with my, my parents. My dad was a pastor. And the one thing that I remember that I always looked forward to was the blessing. Why? Because I knew once that blessing came, there was one more hymn, and then I could get some donuts. <laughs> now, that's a child's perspective, but as we grow to be adults, sometimes that blessing that we hear every single Sunday can lose its impact in our lives in this way. Maybe some of us hear those words every single week when I lift my hands to bless everyone, but really our mind is, is a thousand miles away. We're thinking about what we're going to do after church. We're thinking about if we're going to socialize afterwards or if we're going to book it to the car. Sometimes we think about what the, the day's going to bring, right? Because you know, oh, finally the service is over and, and I'm able to get out of here and move on with the rest of the day. Oftentimes, the blessing can signify in our minds uh, the fact that, okay, church is done. One more song, and we're out of here. And I don't think, and I know, right, God did not want this blessing to serve as a way to mark the end of worship for his people. Today, we're going to explore exactly what this blessing means and why it's so vitally important for you and I, not just to hear it, but to contemplate, to understand, and to take to heart and to mind how God blessing us changes everything. It reminds us that everything is going to be okay. Now, before we get into what each and every single phrase in that blessing means, I think it's important for us to talk about who is the one that is giving this blessing. You see, on Sunday mornings when I say those words, it's not me, but rather it's God working through me, his instrument, to proclaim to you his personal Blessing, And I say that it is personal because that is what it is. You see, God, when he first established himself and chose the Israelites to be his people, as he was about to lead them out of Egypt, he came to Moses and he said, Moses, I want you to be my leader. I want you to get those people out of Egypt. And, and Moses kind of made a lot of excuses. He was a little shy about doing that. He said, well, Lord, you know what? I, I just don't know that, that I'm capable and God said, yeah, you are. If you weren't capable, I wouldn't have asked you. And Moses says, well, Lord, I, I'm, just a, I'm not a good speaker. Send someone else, maybe my brother Aaron. And, and God says, okay, well, Aaron can help, but you're still going to be my instrument to do this. And one excuse after another, and finally Moses just says, okay, Lord, I'll, I'll do this. But, Lord, you need to tell me. If I'm going to go before Pharaoh and this entire nation of Israel and say that, that, that we're going to get out of here, who should I say sent me? And it's at that moment, you can read these words, I'll read them here in a second, that God gives to Moses and to us his name. Well, his name, we, we know what his name is, right? It's God. 
God is what he does. God is his position, but his name, the one that he is referred to, the what he calls himself, is something that you see in this blessing. It's called the Lord, capital L-O-R-D. And essentially what that means is is this, that, that God is giving himself a name, but he's also giving himself a reputation. So at the end of our text, it says this, verse 27, so they will put my name on the Israelites, meaning this, that God is going to claim the Israelites and all of us to be his own. His name is going to be on us, and I will bless them. Well, what does it mean in God's name? In Exodus 34, this is how God describes himself as he gives himself the name, I am. And he that is God passed in front of Moses, proclaiming the Lord capital L-O-R-D, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. If you're taking notes, I want you to jot this down because this is what's so amazing about God's blessing. Is this, that when we hear and see the name the Lord, it means I am, right? Right? God is not, I will be, God is not, I was, God is, I am. That's what Lord means in Hebrew, Yahweh. And specifically what he talks about when he puts his name on you and me, he says, I am the God of free and faithful love. And when God speaks of his free and faithful love, he speaks to me. Now, for all you grammar nerds, I want to explain something. In English, right, we read this blessing, the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have that second person pronoun, Y-O-U. And that can mean like you as an individual or y'all, right? Like you people. But in Hebrew and as God speaks this blessing, it's a singular you. So when you hear those words of the Aaronic blessing, know that God is not saying the Lord bless you all. He's saying the Lord bless you and you and you. In you. This is vitally important because that's another way in which God's love and his grace can impact us because God is not a God that speaks in platitudes and generalizations. He is a God who speaks to the person. The God of free and faithful love and grace speaks to every one of us. And as he does, he gives us some pretty amazing things. One of the things that God blesses us with, it it says this, the the Lord blesses me with protection. The very first words of the Aaronic blessing, the Lord bless you and keep you. This is one of the amazing things that that God is is communicating to his people, right? Uh, When you understand that word bless in Hebrew, it really understands this, right? That that, that he's going to shower down and give you everything that you need, that, that God is a God who provides, It doesn't say that God's going to give you all the earthly blessings that your heart desires, but God is going to give you exactly what you need for your body and soul. That is a guarantee, that is a promise that will never hit the floor. But more so it says this, not just that he's going to bless you with everything that you need for body and soul, but also God the Heavenly Father is going to do this. He's going to keep you close to himself. I envision this, right? As you understand that word keep, imagine a parent, a mother or a father, right, who who is holding their their young child in the midst of a dark night so as to keep them close so that nothing can harm them in the midst of the darkness. That is what God does for you and me. And for the Israelites who first heard this, the very first time, that meant a lot, right? Because they were going into this wilderness. They were going into a place that was unknown, And more so, they they had just left Egypt, and they had enemies all around them. And for them, all the confidence and comfort came when they knew God was not just going to give them what they needed for body and soul, that he was going to provide everything, but also that he was going to keep them close to him, that he was going to protect them. And is that a wonderful comfort for us living in our world today? I mean, we live in a world that obviously and clearly has been tainted by sin. We live in a world that, that really, many of us, if we let it get to it, we can just live in constant and continual fear. 
Uh, fear of the things that happen to us as individuals, right? You, you turn on the TV, you look on the internet, and there's more and more of these mass shootings, unpredictable, without cause or concern, just out of the blue, people are killed. You could talk about fear in the sense that you and I, as Christian people, are living in a world and a society that wants nothing to do with us. That looks at, at our biblical morals and says that is just too old-fashioned and obsolete, and so they persecute us Sometimes with words, sometimes with taking away the freedoms that are ours. We live in a world where you could be overwhelmed with fear because of the spiritual things that are going on. How many of us, day in and day, aren't unconfronted with one temptation after another to give in to, to sinful habits or to let Satan get the best of us? How comforting it is to know that God not only provides everything we need for body and soul, but that he keeps us safe and close to him. Both in a a very real and physical way by sending his angels to protect us, but also in a spiritual way, right? By, By giving us the comfort and the confidence that comes through God's word and the promises that he makes to us. On Sunday morning when we hear that blessing, we know that that we can be driven to live a life for God because we know that one thing we always will have is God's protection. Another aspect of this blessing that is amazing is we understand this, that the Lord, right, the God of free uh, and full grace and love, he blesses us not just with protection, but also with pardon. Let me read the second part, verse uh, 25. It says, the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Here's an amazing thing. Uh, again, liking it to parents, if you know of anyone that has an infant, uh, and especially perhaps maybe if it's, if it's a new mom and dad, one of the things that you will see without fail is when that child is born and they're even holding them in the hospital, the one thing you always see on mom and dad's face is what? A smile. A smile as they look at that child and see it's nothing more than just a little bundle of joy. They look down with this love and compassion as though that they would give up everything, including their life, to make sure that that child is safe. It's a look and it's a smile of love. Unconditional. Unmerited. Absolute grace. Then, right, those kids grow old and all of a sudden sometimes there begins a little bit of a different look on mom and dad's face. Maybe that two-year-old is continually just throwing one tantrum after another, and all of a sudden the look on mom and dad's face is not one of of love and smile, but maybe a stern look of like, you better knock it off, or one more time, something's going to happen. You see, the beautiful thing about God, about the Lord, the God of free and full grace, is that he has every right to look at each and every one of us in the same way that a mom and dad would sternly look at a disobeying child. Because the Bible speaks clearly about what, what our status is without Jesus. It talks about this, that, that we're, we're, we're actually enemies of God. That God is perfect and holy, and because we have sin in our lives, the one thing that God could never, ever possibly do is actually look at us with any sort of love, that he has to be away from us, that God cannot stand to be around sin because he's holy. But that's not what this verse says, does it? The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. You see, the Lord is able to bless us with his pardon because you know what? Jesus took our sin on him and because of that, it was forever deleted from God's memory bank. And so while God has every right to look at us with stern look and wrath and punishment for sin, he doesn't. Why? Because we've been pardoned of our sins for Jesus' sake. And so rather, with a stern look and disapproving God, Let's his face shine on us because he knows that we are his forgiven and dearly loved children. Again, that brings so much impact on a day-to-day life, doesn't it? Because, again, we live in a world where people are mean. Where they say and think things about us or to us that can break our heart to make us feel so disconnected and unloved. 
Not so with God. Not so with the Lord, the God of free and full grace, because he blesses us. Because he makes his face shine us. Because he looks at us with delight. Because he knows our sins are forgiven. He's one person that will never, ever, ever leave or forsake us. All of it made possible because of the pardon of sins that Jesus has given to us. That's a big driving force, isn't it? That, that helps us to, leave, uh, or to live our life for him as we know that there is nothing that's going to separate us from his forgiveness and his love. He blesses us with his pardon. And finally, the amazing thing about this blessing is the Lord also blesses me as an individual, not just with his protection, not just with his pardon, but also with his peace. Verse 26 says this, The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Kind of interesting, uh, it, it, the word there in Hebrew is actually shalom. Maybe some of us heard that. And, and oftentimes shalom is just kind of what we understand to be a, a greeting, right, in the Hebrew language. But, but that word shalom, meaning peace, is, is far deeper than that. Uh, it kind of means this, that, that everything is sufficient, meaning that you have nothing lacking in your life. Again, I talked earlier about traveling, right? And one of the biggest things that every person has to do when they go on a road trip is pack. And especially if you have kids, oh my goodness, the list is forever long. And without fail, you always forget something. But yet there are those one time, every so often, where you can put everything in the suitcase, put it in the trunk of the car, go to the airport, get on the plane, or, or get in your car and drive across country, and you have a little peace of mind. You have a full peace of mind because you know that you are lacking nothing. Everything is in that suitcase. When we talk about the peace that God gives us, it means this, that, that we lack nothing, that we can have peace of heart and mind because we know everything that we could possibly want or imagine or need, God provides. And God provides in many different ways, okay? First and foremost, he provides in a very spiritual way. He gives us that peace in this way that, that, that we know because of Jesus, we are at peace with God, that we're not enemies, but that we're one. But the other peace that God can give us is more of a temporal peace because of that first eternal and spiritual peace. We know that because everything's good with God, it doesn't matter what happens in this life, that's the one thing that I have. And so therefore, all of a sudden, my perspective changed on what, the things that I worry about and things that I don't worry about. That, that I know God is always going to be there to provide. And so because he promises that to me, I can live each and every single day with an overwhelming sense of peace. Later on in Romans 8, we read earlier from Romans 5 in our scripture reading, but later on in Romans 8, Paul talks about another piece that comes in understanding this, that, that nothing in this world is going to separate us from God's love. Romans chapter 8 says this, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. You see, Paul had peace no matter what was going on in his life because he knew one thing was sure and certain. Nothing was going to separate him from God's love. Jesus, towards the end of his ministry, before you go to Calvary's cross, he talked to his disciples who were very anxious about all the things that, that Jesus said it was going to happen, like he was going to be arrested and beaten and tried and, and eventually killed. And, and this is what he said to comfort them. He goes, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You see, Jesus provides and God blesses us with a peace that says you and I don't have to be afraid. That we don't have to sit up late at night, anxious thoughts and nervousness running and coursing through our body because Jesus gives us peace. This is what God, the Lord, does to each and every one of us. He, he blesses us with his protection. He, he blesses us with his pardon, his forgiveness, and he blesses us with a peace that no one in this world can even begin to understand, even ourselves, because we have God's love.
because we have a peace that tells us we don't have to be afraid. Because we are blessed by God in those three ways, doesn't it make it a lot easier for us, compelled by his love, to live for him? Doesn't it make us that more excited to to go on this journey of our life as Christian people with the confidence that comes in knowing that everything is good between God and I. Now I, because of that certainty, can live and be driven to do so many things for him. As we continue this sermon series, my hope and my prayer is that you have all the more reason and confidence to be driven and to live for God because of the fact that God blesses you. He blesses you with protection, with pardon, and with peace. Amen? Amen. 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 I have an opportunity uh, as Chris.